السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبي الرحمة والهدى محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his entire household, all his companions, may Allah bless them all, and may he bless every single one of us. My brothers and sisters, we are going through the lives of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in order for us to draw lesson from these heroes and their closeness to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This evening, we will be going through the lives of two such messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the companions of the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first being Abdullah ibn Salam radiyallahu anhu. He was a Jewish rabbi and he was one of the senior Jewish rabbis present in Medina Munawwara. His name was al Husayn ibn Salam prior to him accepting Islam. And there is a beautiful story about how he accepted Islam. It is important for us to know it. So they had come to Medina Munawwara in order to expect or in order to meet the messenger that was due to come into the region because the previous scriptures have made mention of the fact that the messenger was going to come at a certain land and the description of the land was that there would be date palms between the two rocky deserts. And this description fitted Medina Munawwara exactly. And so a lot of the Jewish religious men and their followers had shifted to Medina Munawwara as well as Khaybar and nearby. From amongst them, the family of Abdullah ibn Salam, this man who was known as al Husayn ibn Salam, and they lived for many years. He became a rabbi and he was very respected amongst his people and the Jewish community around Medina Munawwara, especially Banu Qaynuqa, from whom he was. So he was highly respected. They used to go to him. They used to learn the Torah. And he was a person who was very calm and collected and extremely knowledgeable. This was Abdullah ibn Salam. He spent his day by dividing it into three. The first portion of the day, he would spend teaching and preaching in the synagogue. And he would call people towards worshipping Allah as a Jewish person, as a person of the book. And the second part of the day, he would spend in a little plantation that he had in Medina Munawwara. And at the same time, serving his family and looking after the various chores and engaging in a little bit of the housework and so on. And the third part of the day, he would spend reading the Torah and reading the scriptures. And he was particularly interested in the description of the messenger who was about to come. He was so keen, he knew it off by heart. He used to tell his people, there will be a messenger who will come. The description in the Torah of this messenger is that he will leave his birthplace and come to a place that is described either Medina Munawwara or exactly that. And he was hoping that it would be Medina Munawwara. So what had happened is as time passed, one day, this man, al Husayn ibn Salam, later to be known as Abdullah ibn Salam, he was busy in his orchard. And he had already heard of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam having been in Makkah al-Mukarramah and saying that he was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So prior to this, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's news had come to Medina Munawwara, this man, al Husayn ibn Salam, he studied the qualities of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from afar. He asked the people about his qualities and he compared them to the scriptures he had. And he found them to be exactly as he was taught and exactly as the scriptures held. So in his heart, he knew that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger. And this was whilst he was still in Medina, in Makkah al-Mukarramah. Whilst Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was still in Makkah al-Mukarramah. So what happened? Something very interesting. He kept it away from his people because he found them, according to him, to be quite stubborn. And they, they had this feeling of superiority such that if the man is not from us, we're not going to accept him. 
And this was something that we learn a great lesson from. I mentioned it a few days back where I said, my brothers and sisters, when goodness comes to you and when guidance comes to you, even if it comes from a person of a different race, a different nationality, no matter who it is in terms of social standing, economic standing, whatever else, you take it because it is good. It is on merit that we accept. It is not dependent on who is bringing that particular message. It is dependent on what they are saying. May Allah grant us goodness. So Abdullah ibn Salam says that I was busy in an orchard of mine one day and with me was my aunt and her name was Khalida bint al-Harith. This man was known as Al-Husayn Abdullah ibn Salam, Al-Husayn ibn Salam ibn al-Harith. So his father's sister was with him and Suddenly a man came up and he was announcing that the Prophet has come, the Prophet has come, the Prophet has come. This announcement was being made Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina Munawwara. And Abdullah ibn Salam says, when I heard this, I said, Allahu Akbar. Now Allahu Akbar is obviously a Jewish statement as well. And because they believe in one Allah and they always used to declare and they still do declare that Allah is the greatest. It's just that we say it in Arabic whilst they may say it in another language. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the acceptance of this statement, not just being said by tongue, but actually being believed by the heart. So Abdullah ibn Salam's aunt heard him say this and she was shocked. She said, it is as though you are welcoming someone equivalent to the Prophet Moses, subhanallah. Which means you are saying this so loudly as though you are welcoming someone and you wouldn't have said this unless it was the Prophet Moses himself or someone similar. So he said, oh my aunt, let me tell you. This was the first time he's saying it. The person whom they are talking about is actually the brother of Moses, equivalent to him. He has brought the completion of what Moses has come with. May peace be upon them all. Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And he is the final messenger whom we have been waiting for for so long. So the aunt was quite surprised. And the aunt looks and she says, how do you know this? He says, well, it's from the previous scriptures. So what he did is he went to Quba, something amazing where the Prophet Sallallahu was. And there were a lot of people gathered around the Prophet Sallallahu Something very interesting. A lot of people gathered around the Prophet ﷺ, and this man, he was not so young. He was a very respectable Jewish person. They knew him. The Muslims knew him. The non-Muslims knew him. The Christians and Jews knew him. The Mushriks, meaning the polytheists, they all knew him and they respected him a lot. He was honest and upright. And so when he saw all the people, he tried to get a glimpse of Muhammad ﷺ, and he says, Wallahi, as soon as I saw his face, I knew that this is not the face of a liar. He won't lie. This is a truthful man. And he said, as I am there, I'm listening to his words. And the first words I remember of what he said, he says, Ayyuhannas, Afshu salam, wa atu'imu ta'am, wa silu al-arham, wa sallu bil-layli wa nasu niyam, tadkhulu jannata rabbikum bi salam. Four things he says, O oh people, spread peace and spread the greeting of peace amongst you. Afshu salam. Feed those who do not have food and feed those who have food as well from amongst your relatives. Feed the food. Wasilul arham, maintain your family ties and understand the relationships that you have to fulfill. That is number three. And number four, pray at night when everyone is asleep. And as a result, you will enter the garden of paradise that your Lord has prepared for you with peace and ease. Those were the first words I heard, he says. And immediately I went to him and I told him, O Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and that you are a messenger. And you are the messenger we have been waiting for. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks him, what is your name? He says, my name is Al-Husayn ibn Salam. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in fact, you are Abdullah ibn Salam. He gave him a better name. So Abdullah ibn Salam, that was the day his name changed completely. And he said, O oh messenger, I wouldn't have loved a better name than this one you've just given me, the servant of Allah, the worshipper of Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Ahabbul asma'i ilallahi Abdullahi wa Abdul Rahman. The most loved names to Allah, Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. So this man, he loved that name. And he was from then to this day known as Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu. 
So that hadith of peace and spreading the peace is hadith of Abdullah ibn Salam. He says those were the first words I heard and I accepted the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So thereafter he went back home. He met his family. He spoke to his wife and his children and told them the messenger we've always been waiting for has come. They all accepted Islam. His wife and children and his aunt, they accepted Islam. But when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met him again, and now obviously he knew that this man was one of the leaders of the Jews, one of the senior rabbis of the Jewish people, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a discussion happened between the two of them regarding calling the rest of the Jews. If you are the leader, surely you can explain to them. If you are the one who's been teaching them the Torah all along, and you are the one who's been leading them all along, surely you can tell them that the messenger that has come is actually the truthful messenger. All the signs mentioned in the Torah have been found in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says, oh messenger, I know my people and I know the weaknesses they have. They will reject it. So they decided to hatch a plan and they called some of the people of Banu Qaynuqa, the leaders of the, from amongst the Jews and the others. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called them and Abdullah ibn Salam decided to hide in the room behind Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called them to Islam and asked them to accept the message and they refused. He, he told them to worship Allah alone and the deen that had come and so on and the similarities between the Jewish religion and Islam and whatever else was discussed. Allah knows best. They refused completely. Then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, who is al Husayn ibn Salam from amongst you? So they looked at each other and they said, he is our leader and the son of our leader. And he is the most knowledgeable from amongst us and he is the son of the most knowledgeable. He is our guide and the son of our guide. So Muhammad sallallahu said, if I were to tell you that he has declared his following of Islam, would you also accept Islam? They said it is impossible for him to do that. There is no chance ever that he would ever accept you as a messenger. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as they were saying it, Abdullah ibn Salam emerged from the room and he says, O messenger, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and that you are the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Immediately his people said, you are a traitor, the son of a traitor. You are the worst from amongst us, the son of the worst. You are a hypocrite, a son of the hypocrite. You have absolutely no knowledge, nor did your father. Within a second. So Abdullah ibn Salam looks at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, didn't I tell you the weakness of my people? If you were from amongst them, they would have accepted the fact that you have come from the others, meaning from the children of Ismail, they will not accept. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us not from amongst those who reject the truth when it comes to us from someone who is not belonging to our race or who does not belong to our nationality or our standing. My brothers and sisters, what a beautiful story regarding the acceptance of Islam of this great man, Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu. He was a man whom he fell in love with the Quran because he was in love with the Torah as it is. And he used to constantly beautifully recite the Quran so much and achieve so much of the inner beauty and goodness and satisfaction that he describes it and saying, if you knew the, the satisfaction, you would never stop reciting this Quran. My brothers and sisters, what a blessed book. May Allah grant us the ability to read it, understand it, put it into practice and convey it to others. This was Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu. In fact, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pointed towards Abdullah ibn Salam in several places. Mujahid rahimahullah was a great mufassir, translator of the Quran. He says, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says or mentions some of the people of the book in the Quran, he is referring sometimes to Abdullah ibn Salam. One such example where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَسْتَ مُرْسَلًا قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ Mujahid rahimahullah says, the meaning of this verse is, the kuffar, the disbelievers had said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are not a messenger. And Allah says, Allah is sufficient as a witness between you and them. And sufficient as a witness is also the one who has knowledge of the book. And that was Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu <coughs> anhu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. This was the tafsir of Mujahid rahimahullah. And this man, one last point that we need to make mention of him, <coughs> 
is that he was from amongst those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had informed through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Jannah is his. So he was one of those who was given good news of Jannah during his life besides the ten who were told all at once that you are from Jannah. We spoke about them last night. So this is Abdullah ibn Salam and he is a great Sahabi. It is reported that once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his companions, if you would like to see a man from paradise, look at the next person who comes from this place. So everyone turned around. They were wondering who is going to come. And they saw this man walking very calm, very collected. They say he had a lot of, you know, on his face, you could see that he was a very spiritual person. And as he walked through, they all were so happy that he was from amongst those in paradise. He was the first of the lot ever to be told that you are from paradise. The first of the lot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The next hero that we will be speaking about this evening, inshallah, is another great companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, known as the one who always kept the secret of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what was the secret and who was the companion? His name was Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, ibn Jabir ibn Amr, radiyallahu anhuma. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, radiyallahu anhuma. May peace and blessings be upon him and his father. Al-Yaman was born in Mecca. He was from Mecca. But he had committed a crime in Mecca and he ran away from Mecca to Medina because they were looking for him in Mecca a long, long time back before Islam. So he came to Medina and he had a treaty with Bani al-Ashhal to look after him. You know, he, there was an alliance between them of protection. And so he married from amongst them. And as a result, Hudayfa was born and several other children were born. And then the reasons why he was not going back to Mecca had disappeared. So he started visiting Mecca once again and so on. And he was from amongst those who visited Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca from Medina. This was Al-Yaman, the father of Hudayfa. In a group of 10, in order to say, we accept your message, we've studied what you've come with, and we believe that you are the messenger. So this was the father Al-Yaman. But Hudayfa himself was a young boy. He believed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without having seen him because he was based in Medina Munawwara. His father had seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he had not yet seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Later on, he meets Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And something interesting happens. When he met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked him, the first thing he asked him is, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, am I considered from amongst the muhajireen or am I considered from amongst the ansar? Where am I fitting in? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and said, Hudayfa, you can choose where you want to fit in, either from the Muhajirin or from the Ansar, because your origins are from Mecca and you were born in Medina. So Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman says, I will be from amongst the Ansar. I choose to be from amongst the Ansar. And he was known as an Ansari. Some people know him or have made him known as a person who was given the choice, either from the Muhajirin or from the Ansar. So as he grew old, mashallah, the battle of Badr took place and he did not participate in Badr. The people might ask, why did this man, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, a great companion of Muhammad sallallahu not participate in Badr? Interesting story. Him and his dad, his father, had gone out just prior to Badr and they were returning to Medina Munawwara and the kuffar had got hold of them and did not want to release them. Where are you going? They said, we are going to Medina. Are you going to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa They said, no, we are going to Medina. So they said, no, we don't want you to go to Medina. We will hold you captive unless you promise us that you will not participate in the war against us. So they promised. They said, okay, we will not participate in the war against you. And they came to Medina Munawwara. When they told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that this is the promise we made, he said, in that case, you stay and don't participate in the battle of Badr, but you may participate thereafter in all because we are people who will fulfill our promise. Subhanallah. This is according to one of the narrations. According to another narration, they were held back until the war was over and then they came back and they participated later on in Uhud. So much so that in Uhud, something very sad happened to the father of Hudayfa. And this, he was known as Al-Yaman ibn Jabir. He was killed in the battle of Uhud by friendly fire, what we would term friendly fire, which means the Muslimin, some of the people did not recognize Al-Yaman 
and they began to attack him. And Hudayfa said, that is my father, that is my father. By the time they realized what Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman was saying, he was already martyred. The father was already martyred and it was a very sad day. But Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, radiyallahu an, he says immediately, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you. يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَهُوَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ The same dua of, Jesus, of Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. Joseph, may peace be upon him. He says, may Allah forgive you. He is the most merciful, most forgiving. And he forgave them. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was very sad. When he heard that Al-Yaman was killed by friendly fire, what we would term friendly fire, he actually decided to pay the blood money for Yaman, Al-Yaman, but Hudayfa refused to take it for himself. Rather, he gave it as a sadaqah for the Muslimin. And he says, oh Allah, bear witness that I'm giving this as a charity for the Muslimin. It was an error. It was a mistake. This was Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. And he was a man that was extremely intelligent and he could read people. He would look at people and tell you that this man don't trust him. Subhanallah. This man is a trustworthy person. This man is intelligent. This man, this, and this man, that. He was very intelligent himself, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. And he was very close to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa trusted him a lot, a lot. And one day, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was seated and told him, Hudayfa, can I tell you a secret that you do not tell anyone after me? He says, yes. Now he was a person whom Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa knew that he keeps secrets. So he says, Jibreel alayhi salam has given me the names of all the hypocrites and here they are. One after the other, the names were given. Who knew these names? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam and Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. No third party ever found out who they were. To this day, we don't have the list. But they knew that Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman knows the list. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu went to say, you know, I'm Umar. I want to ask you who are the people? He says, I cannot say. I cannot say. So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu tried to say, no, you can let me know. I won't let anyone know. He says, not at all. So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu says, okay, the main reason why I wanted to know is Umar's name from amongst those. He says, no, it's not. Subhanallah. Imagine Umar ibn Khattab, the mountain of a man whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, if shaitan, if Umar ibn Khattab walks down a gully, shaitan would go down another gully. And here he is asking, am I from amongst the hypocrites? Just let me know. May Allah free us from hypocrisy. So Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman says, no. Then the Prophet ﷺ was found that on some instances, he was not available to fulfill Salatul Janazah upon certain people. Somehow he was not there. And Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman knew that these are the hypocrites. Muhammad ﷺ is not here. There is no Salatul Janazah being read by Muhammad ﷺ. It was read by someone else. Later on, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, when he was the Khalif, he used to look at the Janazah. If Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman was there, he would pray for them. If Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman was not there, he would also find his way out and somehow he would not pray for them. Because he says, Muhammad sallallahu was instructed at one stage that the hypocrites, you do not lead for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free us from hypocrisy. But he was known as Sahibu Sir. The owner of the secret of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And believe me, he died with those names without telling anyone. That's why we do not know it today. So this was Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. I can let you know something else that happened to him. Very, very interesting. The battle of the trench was when the kuffar of Makkah had come in large numbers to Medina Munawwara with great alliances and the people, some of the Jewish people from Medina Munawwara had supported them. So the Muslims were in, surrounded completely. And it lasted a few days because the wind started blowing and Allah sent angels and Allah sent the wind really to come and take these people off completely and to chase them back to Makkah to Mukarrama. So the wind and the angels had come in the assistance of the Muslimin, but there was a trench that was dug between the kuffar and the Muslimin in a way that if they tried to enter the trench immediately, they would be attacked. They were unable to do that. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after several days when it was now coming to an end, he says, we need news from the other side. We need information. And who is it from amongst you that can go on the other side? Perhaps I will choose one from amongst you. 
Now remember, they were hungry, they were tired, they've been digging, they've, they didn't have much food, and they were really very tired, staying awake all night during the day, lack of sleep, what have you, and they barely had much in terms of clothing, and so on. And Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman says, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa chose me, and says, Hudayfa, be silent. You will go, you cross there, go right into the enemy ranks, find out the news and come back and tell us, and don't let them know that I've sent you there. So Hudayf ibn al-Yaman says, I was tired and I was really, you know, hungry and so on. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa made a dua for me. He says, oh Allah, protect this man from in front, from the back, from the right, from the left, from the top and from the bottom. Once the dua was made, he says, I felt so secure and I felt so encouraged to go. My energy had returned and when nightfall came, I was gone. And quietly I went in darkness the wind was blowing so much that it blew away the fires of everyone so no one could actually see so i went right in and i was sitting right near abu sufyan and the others and he says abu sufyan got up and he says oh my people i sense that there is a problem this was a sharp man very sharp intelligent person it seems like what i'm about to say might get to muhammad so each one of you quickly hold the hand of the person next to you and ask him what his name is. Now Hudayf ibn al-Yaman is the only one who's sitting there and he's from the other side. So he says, immediately I took the hand of the person next to me and I said, hey, what's your name? So he told me I'm so and so. I said, okay, that's, that's okay. And it stopped. So that was how intelligent he was. He says, had that man asked me before I asked him, perhaps I was dead. But this was the protection of Allah. So when he said, each one of you quickly ask the next person what his name is. So I held his hand and I said, what is your name? He says, Fulan ibn Fulan, whoever he was. And he says, okay, that's fine. And they carried on. So Abu Sufyan later then said, the announcement I have to make is, we have been here for so long. The wind is blowing so much. Our horses are not eating. Our camels are dying. The animals are really suffering. We are suffering. We are hungry because as much as we have food, no fire is, is staying alight because the wind is blowing the fires off and our tents are being blown. We are struggling of hunger. The people are getting sick. I think this is now over. Let us go. I am going to Makkah. Whoever wants to follow, we are following. And so he decided to jump onto his conveyance and he started going away. So Hudayf ibn al-Yaman says, Wallahi, he was right next to me. If I wanted to attack him, he would have been finished. But because Muhammad sallallahu said that do not let them know that you are, from a, you are there. Come back to me, letting me know what the news is. I decided I'm doing nothing. I'm going back. So I went quietly back and I told Muhammad sallallahu what happened. And I said, these people are all going away. So he was very happy. But we learn one more thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had written Islam for Abu Sufyan. So he was not killed on that day. Subhanallah. Otherwise, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman was right there. But this man had to die a Muslim. So later on, Abu Sufyan accepted Islam. This is why my brothers and sisters, we need to learn from the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The enemies of Islam, their hearts were softened by Allah. So try out the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Oh Allah, soften the hearts of the enemies so that they see the light. They become from amongst us. Wallahi, right now as we speak, there are people, enemies of Islam, who are busy considering entering into Islam. Some of them have already entered and we've seen the examples. In recent history, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen them and strengthen us for the deen, towards the deen. Ameen. So my brothers and sisters, this was Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. He was a, a beautiful person. He was known as a person who used to ask Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa about the prophecies of the future and all the evil that is going to come in the future. So something unique happened. He says, all the people used to ask about goodness, and I used to ask about the bad. This is why my brothers and sisters, most of the prophecies of Qiyamah and the trials and tribulations that are to come, they were from the hadith of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. He spoke about them and he is the one who was speaking about the fitna and the trials and the tribulations that will come in the ummah of Muhammad wasallam. Because he says, everyone used to ask about good and I used to tell Muhammad wasallam, tell me about what's going to happen. Is evil going to come? He says, yes. What type of evil? So he would describe it. And he would describe more and more and more. And thanks to him, we have the details. May Allah grant us all the ability to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start with. And then to all these heroes of ours. Now, 
He was the one also at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab uh, and the time of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He was a great Sahabi. He worked very hard, simple person. He was from amongst those who took part in many of the battles. In fact, he was the leader of the army when they had uh, the conquest of Hamadan and al ray and the, co the, the conquest of uh, Daynawar and several other places. In fact, even when it comes to Nahawand, he was one of the main leaders of the army who was sent in order to assist. And believe me, they did very, very well. He, he was the one whom, when the Muslim army was in Madain, Madain, and they started getting sick, and the Muslims began to get sick, those who had come in from the Mecca or Hijaz and so on, from that part of the world to Madain. So Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman was the one who said, I think the weather here is not suiting these people. And I think this location is not suiting them. Let's find a better location. So the Amir said, okay, you find a good location. Until he went and he surveyed the land. We said he was very intelligent. He found Kufa. And this is when he said, let's all shift to Kufa. And Kufa was later taken as the headquarters of the Muslims. Whose idea was it? Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this great sahabi. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. One of the statements he used to say, and this is something that I think we would all relate to. He says, the best of you is not he who divorces himself from the world in order to earn the life after. Nor is the best from amongst you he who divorces himself from the life after in order to earn the world. But the best from amongst you is he who uses the world in order to earn the life after. So he has the best of both. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be, to be balanced, bearing in mind that as good Muslims, it's not wrong to have goodness in the world, but it is wrong to let that goodness distract you from the reality that you have a place to go to in the Akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in the Akhirah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله بحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك